of grooming skills to teach you about safety emergency procedure, first aid, uh, first aid and more. So let's get started. Over to you, Majideen. Ah, thank you so much, Mandi. Um, it was uh, nice introducing uh, my part. Uh, well, uh, good morning, Dinesh. Um, how are you today? Good morning. Yeah, I'm good. How about you? Okay. So, Dinesh, uh, before we start, uh, I would like you to introduce yourself. Uh, just tell me something a bit about yourself. Yeah, uh, like uh, I completed my college in Hindustan uh, in 2019, passed out, and uh, I done my aircraft maintenance engineering and uh, B.Sc. avionics. Uh, so, like, uh, I want to get to know the stuff, what are all in cabin crew, so that it will be, like, uh, useful in my future for, for, for my career, that's what. Uh, like, okay. that's what I selected to, like, uh, sorry, uh, that's what I, I got this, uh, like, uh, Manvi, she told me about this, so, and I want to know the stuff about in this, so that's what I joined in. Okay. So that's good. Uh, well, so it's good that, uh, I mean, you uh, have the interest in aviation and you have actually uh, done all the, uh, you know, courses uh, like in maintenance engineering part from the aviation, which is good. Now, um, as you said that you have an interest into the cabin crew, right? Yeah, I know. Like, uh, yes, I'm. Yes. Yeah, because this is a cabin crew course, which I'm going yes, to yes, right? Yes. 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 So, uh, if, so what do you? Why do you want to become a cabin? This is this is just a, a you know a fair a fair question which uh, I normally ask with you know to the students who actually come to the course. So, why do you want to become a cabin? No, like uh, nowadays, uh, like aviation was uh, what to say like it's going down day by down. No, yeah, sorry, day by day. So, like uh, possibly we have to switch our uh, career right to get to move on with the life so uh, like uh, i have been possibly like uh, searching for some kind of uh, worthy courses like this so yes i came okay uh Dinesh, uh, can i tell you one thing whenever uh, you know whenever you're speaking um, you okay. uh, you know a lot of air is coming <laughs> so uh, it's better you just keep it at a distance like how i am speaking i'm keeping this at a distance and then you're speaking, so you can speak loudly. Would that be fine? Okay, and, and speak a little louder so that I can understand. Okay. Um, okay, fine. That is good. So so you have the scenario of the present aviation industry. Uh, how is it going? And post-COVID, how it has affected the, uh, you know, a lot of interest industry, especially the aviation industry. So what knowledge do you have regarding that? Like yes, like because of COVID, uh, say, all maintenance uh, programs have been shut down, and uh, the flights have been uh, cancelled. So that uh, the maintenance programs is not yet to be done, uh, like going uh, in on process like before. Uh, so like uh, my main core was aircraft maintenance engineering. I done my a navy on extreme, uh, and uh, but put a little closer. Uh, put a little closer the the mic. Like, can you hear me? Man? Yes. Yeah, like, uh, but cause of AV, uh, COVID, I can't able to continue in aviation. So by using BSc, like, uh, I uh, I joined in IT, uh, information technology, and uh, I worked there for around one year, uh, like in an Accenture and Infosys. Uh, right now, uh, currently, I'm working in a company called uh, Ambit IT Park. Uh, I'm doing my internship uh, here for two months. So after completing this, uh, like uh, next month, I'm planning to join in uh, Delhi airport. Like I got uh, offered that, uh, a friend offered me that you can join here as a trainee. So if uh, everything is goes well, uh, like uh, I'll be able to join that. Like uh, I have to get some, what you say, like a cabin crew, uh, like uh, before starting a AM, uh, like, uh, Aircraft maintenance engineering, just I want to know about the stuff which are all in aviation, like cabin crew, flight dispatcher, RTR. So, uh, just uh, I want to get info uh, knowledge about developing my knowledge about the aviation industry to grow or uh, to have a growth in day by day. Okay, okay, fine. So, now uh, is uh, can you see my screen? Let's proceed further. Can you see my screen? 
aviation. Okay. See, uh, well, what I have written here is uh, the cabin crew, the backbone of aviation. See, why I have written uh, cabin crew is a backbone of aviation. Uh, first, we need to understand. Um, I need your video to be on, please, uh, continuously. So, so you must have uh, heard about this word crew. Do you need? Uh, do you know the meaning of this word crew? Uh, crew. Uh, exactly. Okay. Crew is uh, the meaning. You know, crew refers to team. Any, uh, any, you know, any uh, group of people who are working together for an organization or working together for a company, that uh, refers to a, a team. So cabin crew, a team of, uh, you know, a group of people who are working into the aircraft cabin, that actually comprises the meaning of a cabin crew. So why are we the backbone of radiation? Why? Because, um, see, we are the ambassadors, the cabin crew, when we work on the aircraft, aircraft is our office, and uh, we are in a direct contact with the passengers, we face the passengers, we deal with the situations, uh, you know, anything which arises on the aircraft. So, hence, if we see, if you look at that way, we are the ambassadors of the respective airlines for which we work, right? So, that's how we are the backbone of the aviation. Even, even during um, in-flight, in case if any emergency situation arises or any medical uh, emergency arises, we are the one who is going to take care of it. So that's the reason I have written the backbone of aviation, which is exactly true. Now uh, to uh, introduce myself, as I've written here, I'm an aviation and grooming trainer. I am, um, I am also an ex-crew uh, with Qatar Airways, uh, Fly Dubai, Indigo and Vistara. So I've flown with a couple of airlines, some domestic as well as international. So I have the experience into the Middle East as well as the international exposure. Also, I train aspiring cabin crew for uh, you know uh, those who are uh, those who want to become a cabin crew. What are the requirements and what is the eligibility criteria? How they have to groom that all uh, you know regarding all that thing. I train. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now before I proceed further, I would like to tell you that in any case, if you do not understand what I'm trying to say, make a point, or if you didn't, if you missed a point, you can uh, straight away huh, ask me. Yeah, okay. okay. Is that okay? Good to go. Yeah. Okay, so let's proceed further. I hope you can see the slides on your uh, on your screen. Uh, yeah. Are you sure? I am. Yeah, I okay. Sure. So what what do you see right now on the screen? Uh, cabin crew lifestyle is more than a fascinating travel adventure. Very good, very good. So here it is written, cabin crew lifestyle is more than the fascinating travel adventure. Like how people uh, outside, they think, oh, the cabin crew, it's a, you know, very good lifestyle. They travel, they, uh, you know, they have good makeup, they have good grooming, uh, they meet people, uh, you know, different things. That is all there. That is the perk which comes with the cabin crew, you know, um, job however apart from these fascinating travel adventure there is more to it like what i told you a little bit earlier that we have to look after the emergency situations okay. we have to deal with the passengers all these things okay so let's move ahead okay now as you see there is this picture of uh, uh, if, if you can uh, i don't know if you have uh, seen the airline cabin crew people uh, in uniform uh, or have you know researched on Google? Well, uh, this is the picture which I have uh, pasted is the my airline picture, the Qatar Qatar okay. Airways. Okay. okay. Um, what is the importance of being a cabin crew? Importance, as I said, they are the only face in the flight. They are the only uh, one who's going to take care of the passengers in emergency or any medical situation arises or, or anything, which uh, whatever happens on board, they're going to rescue the passengers. They are the last resort for the passengers, uh, you know, uh, help. So it is very, very important that uh, we cabin crew should be at the front line uh, of uh, the aviation industry. And that's why we are called as the frontline warriors, because there's no one, uh, you know, on... Uh, in the air to look after that. Now, what are the duties and responsibilities? Duties and responsibilities, there are many duties and responsibilities. Now, it starts cabin crew duties and responsibilities are not just welcoming passengers and, uh, you know, 
uh, escorting them towards their seat or looking after the aircraft or just serving. That's not only the duties and responsibility. The foremost thing which is important for a cabin crew is uh, the safety. Whose safety? Safety of the passengers and the aircraft, also the safety of uh, herself or himself, right? Because if you are uh, you know, safe, then only you can take care of the other people, right? Okay. So that's the first thing which comes when it comes to duties uh, hello. and response. Uh, ma'am, like your screen is not, uh, I can't able to see your screen. You can't see my screen? Yeah, 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 okay. Now it's... Uh, just a second. Hello? Just yeah. a second, I'll, I'll share okay. it again. Oh, no, ma'am. Like, I can't even... The safety comes... Safety comes the first thing on within duties and responsibilities, and then comes the service. Service is this something, obviously, uh, you know, giving uh, food to the passengers, attending the passengers towards the passengers' needs in case if they want to buy anything on board, because we uh, we give, we actually uh, provide on sales the duty-free products, which is there. Also, uh, there are some airlines who uh, sell food items and uh, different other items as well so so that is also the one of the responsibilities when it comes to service so the foremost thing is safety and then the service that's what cabin crew is all about okay now the cost to the company now we are talking about the salary ctc you know that right yeah so why the cost to the company for the cabin crew as everybody says it's a lucrative job uh, I mean, the salary is huge for the uh, cabin crew, and uh, the basic salary is uh, some, you know, a good one. And then when they fly, they make uh, money with the flying hours. With every passing flying hours, they make money. So uh, normally, um, if you talk about the international airline, they can earn up to lakhs or more than that. Oh. But when you're talking about the domestic airlines, they can earn close to the lakhs, like around 50, 60 thousand or more than that of 70 to 80 thousand depending on how much you are flying and where you're flying you will also be getting the uh, meal allowances wherever you are staying in whichever country you're going you will be provided the hotel uh, uh, you know this uh, um, hotel meal allowance each and everything you will be getting from the company okay now then comes the emergency and first aid emergency and first aid uh, is all about the uh, any kind of emergency situations which, which arises on board. For example, if there is any fire on board, God forbid, if there is any uh, crash landing on water or any such kind of, or maybe a decompression thing. So in that case, um, cabin crew are well trained to handle all these things. And when we are talking about first aid, we're talking about the medical emergency. Like we are trained on the first aid and we take care of the passenger in case of any medical emergency arise. For example, if a passenger has fallen down on the aisle and uh, what kind of treatment they need or he or she needs. So in that case also, we are trained. So these are the things which cabin crew are well versed after the training. Okay. Passenger management. Passenger management is all about uh, speaking to the people, you know, passengers, the customers who fly with the airlines uh solving their uh, issues in case if there is any anything regarding um, a conflict between there can be anything a conflict between the crew and the passengers conflict between the two fellow passengers conflict with the seat or conflict with anything okay. so we are there on board and we are the one who face these people and definitely we are the one who have to take care of all these things and this actually um you know increases our uh, interpersonal skills and uh, uh, kind of uh, we, we will learn how to deal with uh, you know sudden in situation which arises which, okay. so that is very important so i hope you have understood till now any yeah. questions okay no, no. so let's move ahead 
uh, as I have already told you about the introduction, cabin crew, they are the ambassadors, they work in the aircraft cabin. Mm. Because for us, aircraft cabin is our office, mm. right? Yes. That is all, that is our office. Then um, they, we are the frontline warriors as we have, you know, we are the one who will be taking care in the flight and we are the main point of main contact point. with the passengers, okay? okay? Now, let's talk about what is the criteria for a cabin crew? You know, the eligibility criteria for a cabin crew to work in any airline or to get selected in any airline. So let's talk about age first. In domestic airline, as you see, it's written 18 years or over. Mm. Okay, so that's the uh, <laughs> mark, benchmark, I would say. International airline, 21 years or over. However, exceptions are there. Why? Because some must, most of the international airlines, like for example, Singapore Airlines or some other airlines, they will start uh, taking crew uh, from 18 years. And most of the airlines from the Middle East and some other airlines, they will start taking crew from 21 years ago. Okay. Okay. So that varies. Now, height for female, it's minimum 57, 157 centimeters. Okay, around like 5'3", five, 5'2". Five, and male, it's 160, it's starting around 5'6". Okay, so that is the starting uh, height. However, exceptions are there because there are some, there are many countries, for example, Singapore or uh, many other countries where the height is not as much as compared to the other countries. So there the height will go down. The height okay. criteria will go down. Okay. okay, they can take uh, any uh, like uh, the in their criteria. Okay, yes, because okay. because if you have seen maybe in the videos or somewhere, uh, these far east countries, most of them see, I will not generalize, but as I have flown and I've worked with these people, I'm just telling it from my experience. The height, uh, it varies, they are they have less uh, height as compared to the uh, you know, different other. Country. So that's the reason why they will they will actually opt for less height for the females as well as male both. Okay. Now weight weight would be in proportion to the height. Uh, you're not going to be overweight. In case if you're overweight, you have to reduce or uh, come to the basic uh, weight criteria in order to get selected. So that is very very important. Uh, that means you have to maintain the BMI, which is body mass index, and uh, that is. Yeah, that is the height proportionate to weight. Eyesight has to be cleared. Your eyesight uh, would be tested. It will be definitely tested. And uh, you can wear specs. You okay. can you can go with the lens as well. Yeah. Be yes, that is also about allowed because in many, many airlines, even if you are not allowed to wear specs, you can go ahead with the lens. lens yes. So it's allowed. Okay. Uh, skin has to be cleared. It's regardless of uh, saying this because you need not have any pimples, no marks, nothing like that. And for that, you need to take care of your skin, obviously go for the natural thing. And we'll be talking about that in uh, you know, later. Then um, we talk about the education. Education, see, for cabin crew, not much uh, ex you know, education or experience is required. Just uh, uh, 12 or equivalent with three years diploma or any graduate, depending on which from which country you're coming from. So, so that is fine. So starting is the 12. If you're 12 pass, you will be selected. Now there are many airlines in India, for example, Vistara. Uh, they will actually take uh, that you, they will take you in case if you're 12 uh, pass, but then they have a specific criteria with the percentage of marks that you need to be above 60% or something like that. There are some airlines like, which are- uh, Languages are not uh, like uh, their preference. Like Lang a person must know uh, this kind of languages. Languages, you're talking about like which kind of languages is uh, required? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Languages, uh, see, if, you're, if I'm talking about in India, then definitely English and Hindi is mandatory. mandatory. That is mandatory. Apart from that, in case if you know other regional languages like Tamil, Telugu, uh, Urdu, or Gujarati, Rajasthan, whatever it is, that is an added advantage okay but uh english and hindi is the required why because hindi is the national language and english is the universal language so that's why these two languages are required now when we're talking about the international airlines international airline then english is the 
most required. It okay. is the mandatory thing. Why? Because there will be many nationalities working together. So in order to work with them, in order to communicate with them, you need to speak in one language. And that is English, obviously. You can, uh, obviously, the other languages can be an added advantage. However, English has to be the Now, no tattoo or piercing. No tattoo or piercing. There are, there are many airlines which are very strict with the tattoo part. For example, my airline, Qatar Airways. They're very, very strict. It should not be on the visible part. Most of the airlines, they actually take that uh, the tattoo should not be on the visible part, like on the hands or, you know, on the shoulders or legs, no visible part. But then there are some airlines who will not even take you, even if you have done tattoo on the invisible part. Okay. Okay, for example, the one which is uh, hidden inside the clothes. So, so you have to be very careful. It's better you don't go for tattoo. In case if you love to do tattoo, then uh, cabin crew is not your profession. Okay. Like I was not interested in tattoo. <laughs> yes. Okay. So let's move ahead. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I have just posted this kind of, you know, just one. Uh, passport size photograph and uh, full size photograph just in order to just show that this is how you're going to click photos don't go with the girl part or the guy part i have actually okay. missed the guy part but i'm going to yeah, okay. uh, show you tomorrow okay, okay. Uh, this is how you're going to uh, show your appearance when you are going for a photograph the smiling and okay. uh, yes and this is how you stand as well i'll, <clears throat> I'll show you the guy uh, photograph tomorrow mm. okay okay now, what are the benefits of the cabin? The benefits, uh, there are many benefits. Endless, I would say. Travel. Obviously, the travel thing comes first. Who doesn't want to travel all around the world? Who doesn't want to you know, visit places, your favorite places? Now, tell me, when you're talking about travel, tell me, which is your favorite place? Where do you want to go? Like, uh... Anywhere. Be it in India, be it outside India, anywhere. Uh, I want to go to Swiss. Where? Yeah, Switzerland. Switzerland. Uh, I didn't get that. Could you please repeat? Switzerland. 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 So that means yeah. you like to visit Switzerland. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Good. Um, very uh, beautiful place it is, yeah, and uh, very much beautiful, and you would like it. Yes, it is expensive. Yeah. However, there are many languages spoken in that country, like German and uh, French. So different languages are spoken, but it's okay. very, very beautiful. Yeah. So now in order to for you to get selected into the Swiss airlines, you need to have that work permit. You know, in the, like, for example, you need to have uh, any kind of, you know, work visa, which they will provide. Otherwise, you need to have a permit soon to work there. So it's very difficult. However, in any ways, even if they come up with the criteria, then why not? Okay. <laughs> okay. So meet people. Yes, you are going to interact with different people from different cultures, backgrounds, people speaking different languages. Now, that is very interesting. You know, when you will start to meet people, you will actually see that what you were missing. Actually. And uh, this is how you uh, become extrovert. You uh, try to social, uh, you know, you love to socialize. You love to speak to the people, travel. So this is very, very good. Lucrative job, as I've already explained, a uh, lot of money, very uh, good salary. And uh, then we come down to the free hotel accommodation. Yes, we do not have to pay anything. These airlines, they will take care of our hotel accommodation. Now, when, when do we get the hotel accommodation? Whenever you're doing a layover flight, a port. For example, uh, you're flying from Delhi to London. Okay, and you will be staying in London for one day or two days, whatever. So there you will be staying in a hotel. So for that, the hotel accommodation expenses will be provided by the airline. So you need not worry about anything. That's it. Okay. Yeah. So within India, the accommodation is not required. Within India, uh, see, uh, if we are talking about the hotel accommodation, uh, you will be uh, traveling. For example, you are doing a flight from Chennai to Delhi. Okay? okay, so it's a long flight, two and a half to uh, yeah, two to two oh, and a half. Okay, sure, okay. Yes, so in, in that case, in that case, 
you will be uh, provided a hotel accommodation to stay by the company but definitely you will not be asked to pay anything if all the exp uh, expenses will be bared by the company okay. but yes the airlines in india will not give you the you know your uh, personally like home accommodation to stay that you have to uh, arrange on your own okay okay there are in the world around the world there is only middle east airlines uh, there are many middle east airlines which will give you uh, the accommodation to stay like your flat accommodation and all that but uh, there are no other airlines in the world who will give you the accommodation okay? okay but you will be getting the house allowance housing allowance and all these things now the another i'm sorry uh, like after gaining some experience and uh, working experience okay. no housing allowance will be uh, given uh, from in your salary it will be including the salary okay okay and i didn't understand after getting some experience what you want to ask no like uh, after getting some experience uh, means uh, uh, we'll be able to get some accommodations more than before oh you mean that after you have uh, earned some years into the company oh, working yeah, yeah. after that you will get uh, some accommodation by the company no that is not in, in case if the airline is not giving you any accommodation to stay you will not get that you have okay. to arrange on your own but this okay. hotel accommodation is something very different that is uh, bared by the company because you are on a layover uh, and working for the company that's why. so like okay. uh, depend upon the airlines it will be changed right? yes yes okay okay sure discounted flight tickets discounted flight tickets uh, you will be getting uh, for example uh, as you are the employee of the company so wherever you are flying you will not be paying the full fare of the ticket you will be paying either half or 10% or something like that so you will be getting the discounted flight tickets so that is one of the benefits even for your parents and uh, for girls uh, till they are not married they will get for the parents and after that for husband and wife so these are the rules which is being followed by each and every airline and discounted flight tickets are given now flexible job times yes it's not the monopoly of working uh, every day 9 to 5 uh, you know job or 9 to 6 job because nowadays most of the people they work around like 10 hours 11 hours so that is not uh, the case here you will get flexible job timings you will also uh, get many ops for example you have done three flights or two flights or four flights after that you will get around one or two or three days off that depends so around seven to eight days off you will be getting in a month so it is good uh, and uh, it is not fixed that you will be getting off on saturday sunday no you can get your off on weekdays as well so which is good that uh, in any case if you have any you know office work or company work or bank work or anything Yeah, it is good so that is the plus point of this job okay and then comes the camaraderie camaraderie is the same thing like you will be meeting people you will have, get in touch with uh, you know your employees and then you working with them you build a relationship work relationships so that is also very good like socialize with them so it's kind of that yeah. why because this is all about building relationships with you know interpersonal skills so which is a good benefit at least uh, someone who is introvert that introvert will be shed all the way okay so now let's move ahead um any uh this is uh, what i have what you see right now on the screen uh we i have kept i have actually put that in boxes this is um, the hierarchy of a cabin like uh, how you have been uh, you know uh, started how you have started and then you will reach to which level for example normally when you uh, are hired you will be hired as a economy cabin crew economy class cabin crew. okay you will work there and we have different names for different airlines some airlines they call that position as an f2 okay uh, so first you will work as a economy class cabin crew then after some years of experience done with several assessments 
with several assessments, you will uh, move ahead and work into the business class. Okay, with the training, first of all, the assessments will be done. Then you will uh, get promoted, you will go with, for the training, and then you will get into the business class. You'll work there for some year, then according to your performance, according to your assessment uh, feedback, you will be promoted to the first class. Take the training, start working with the first class. Some years working with the first class, and then you come down to you uh, reach to the cabin senior. Cabin but senior. yes, cabin senior or the senior cabin crew or cabin supervisor, they're different names with different airlines. Okay, there's not just one name. So uh, these are the you know, this position, the person who's working on this position is responsible for the entire economy section. Okay economy section of the cabin you understand what is the economy class cabin crew you know, yes, economy yes, class yes, okay yes, yes. so they are uh, responsible for the entire economy class so whatever happens in the economy class like they have to manage the service they have to get in touch with they have to actually you know boost their team who those who are working in the economy class they have to arrange they have to systematize the work which they are doing so all these things and whatever happens, they will be responsible. Okay. Now, after some years of flying as a cabin senior, and if uh, according to the assessments and everything, if uh, you are good to go, then uh, you will be promoted to cabin service director or crew in charge or cabin manager. Now, the person who is promoted to this position will start working um, as a supervisor to the entire aircraft. Okay. okay be it uh, the economy, business, or first class, that person will be responsible for the entire aircraft. Yeah. Okay. So anything happens in the entire aircraft, she is going, he or she is going to be responsible and she has to manage their team. Okay. And then the last one is the check crew or the performance officer. Now, this is the position which requires both were sitting in the office and uh, working with the papers and also flying at times these are the this is the position which is very very responsible where you have to sometimes fly and check the performance of the crew they fly as a passenger or fly as a cabin crew but then you're checking the uh, performance of the crew that whether they are serving good or not how they are you know uh, behaving and all these things like how people do audit exactly the same okay fine let's move ahead like, now uh, i yes. got a doubt uh, is that uh, males prefer cabin crew most of them males like i think in this session uh, i'm the only male here that's what i'm asking I, I didn't understand could you repeat that no like uh, most of uh, like what to say like uh, males to uh, prefer for cabin crew huh, uh, these days uh, you're asking that males can also work yeah, in the cabin yeah. crew Okay. Yeah, no, no, like uh, males, like most of the males can prefer uh, to be cabin crew uh, these days because uh, I think uh, like I'm the only one male, uh, I think so that's what I'm asking in this section. You are the only one who's taking the training? No, no, like I'm the only male who's in this session. Uh, can you hear me? I, I actually didn't understand the last word which you said. I'm the only male? Male in this section, in this in this online class. Oh, no. See, uh, the normally one thing is that, see, male cabin crew, uh, maybe you haven't seen many male cabin crew. Yeah, there I saw them, uh, like I flown, uh, like I flew with them, uh, like what is it, like I flown in air. Uh, I saw some male crews, hmm. but... Uh, I, I'm asking you, like uh, actually, in this section. Yes, yes, yes. Well, actually, well, actually, see, uh, they have been given different timings, and uh, that actually the management knows because I prefer to take uh, one to one oh. classes. Okay, sure. Okay. okay. <laughs> yes. So uh, you will see many male uh, too, and they will be joining uh, as soon as possible, and also uh, they will have their different timings. So, but and normally what I prefer is uh, not more. You know, it's better to you know speak with the uh, students so that they can understand well, and whatever query you have, you can ask me. So you know, complete attention. Yeah. That's what I prefer. <laughs> okay. Okay. So can we move ahead? Yeah. Sure.
okay so cabin crew flight day in life okay um this is all about a day in the life of a cabin crew like how you start how do you uh, go for your job so let's start like prepare oneself for example you are the cabin crew for working for an airline so you get up early in the morning before your flight time okay and that time if for example if you're working with an international airline you can you have to you know get up at any odd time depending on the flight times okay and even if uh, it is uh, with the domestic i mean with the airlines in india for example if you have very very early morning flight then you have to get up somewhere one or uh, one one o'clock or something like that and then you have to get charged you have to stay, you have to you know get yourself ready and uh, study a bit why to study and what to study here we will get to that as well okay. so you prepare oneself you reach the airport you reach the airport and there is a sign in facility for the cabin crew and captain everyone so you sign in there okay then the briefing starts now what is briefing briefing is um, you know when all the cabin crew are gathered Okay. The supervisor will ask questions regarding to uh, you know regarding the aircraft and uh, the different uh, uh, things uh, like emergency, first aid, and different memos which uh, or rules and regulations of the airline. So these are the things which are being discussed in the briefing. Okay, uh, normally it is the uh, uh, responsibility of the. Uh, main supervisor to check the knowledge of the cabin crew of the of her, his or her subordinates so that they are well uh, they are good to go on the flight for example if they are not at all good in uh, you know answering the questions or having any knowledge about that then that cabin crew will not be taken on the flight that is very sure why because in case any emergency arises he or she will not be able to perform if he or she is not uh, you know confident with himself or herself how will uh, they be able to take the uh, you know care of the passengers they will not be able to care of passengers and that's the reason they are offloaded so briefing is very very important and that is what i said that you have to study or just go through every day because then every day flying you will get to know so that's what happens in the briefing you also meet the captain and first officer of the flight okay get along with them and then you move ahead where okay. where you people will go you'll reach the aircraft okay you reach the aircraft you will keep your luggage to the designated areas wherever it is in the aircraft you will be given positions according to the doors okay there are different doors the left side right side the first left hand side door the, the first right hand side door second right. so according to that door you will be given positions okay and positions accordingly you will store your luggage you will keep your luggage and then you will start carrying out your safety and security check all these things safety security check you know it will be going in your mind but i'm not going to discuss right now i'm just going to give you what they undergo because then again you'll get jumbled up so it's better okay. they will carry out the safety and security check then now by the time everything is done the aircraft is ready the boarding will start ground staff is already ready with the passengers in the bus or the aero bridge is already being connected to the aircraft the passengers will start coming the clearance will be given the passengers are there coming on the board and we will start the boarding then after all the passengers are on board you must have seen that the aircraft has overwing exits you know those exit in the in between the aircraft yeah emergency where exit. emergency exit you can say okay. okay so if the uh, where it's a, it's a it's a place in the aircraft where these passengers sit and they have extra leg room they can right so if the passengers are sitting next to that overwing exit then the cabin crew who is responsible for that particular area will come to the passengers and will give the briefing which is required to give them okay in english and hindi when we are talking about the domestic airline yes. okay english and hindi so is your hindi good 
me or no like uh, i can understand a little bit in the uh, like and <laughs> like i'm uh, learning to learning to get prepared on in the okay uh, yes. okay because I can even speak, uh, yeah okay because even if you go for the airlines uh, in the south hmm. the south india there are some airlines i have uh, get got to know that they also require hindi apart from telugu tamil and all okay. uh, languages yeah okay okay like so uh, i i i'm uh, what is it? like uh, i'm preparing to learn hindi like i can understand little bit hindi and, uh, and i can speak hindi little bit but it's not fluently like i can't able to speak fluently okay so that will also be your test when you are going for a camp uh, job so it's better you brush up your hindi so that's not a rocket science anyways everybody speaks so i i i can understand it will happen so don't worry about that now then comes after the overwing exit briefing then comes the demo now what is demo the demonstration of the uh, emergency anything of which arises in the emergency situations or any kind of tools which we use and give it to the passengers for example you must have heard of that uh, you know demonstration positions uh, yeah. where this crew stands and they give the demonstration so they yeah. talk about how the seat belts have been fastened and unfastened how the oxygen mask come down, comes down and uh, you have to take the oxygen then how this uh, uh, you know the life jacket they talk about the life jacket they talk about the uh, the rows all these things are been given okay been taught actually spoken about yeah. now comes now comes the cabin secure now cabin secure is all about going into the cabin and watching that all the passengers have fastened their seat belts and uh, the window shades are open and the overhead bin which is right above where you keep the cabin luggage where you yes. keep the luggage also that is all closed all these things are that comes in the cabin secure why right? because we have to secure the cabin before take off it is unclosed necessary <laughs> you know then uh, the doors are closed from where the passengers have boarded the doors are closed clearance is given then all these things and then we take off after we uh, take off yes like i, I got to know, like uh, cabin crew should be assisted with uh, doing how to close the door and open the doors right yes 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 that is very important right for cabin crew yes that is very important we will come to that okay. but uh, yes it is very very important and uh, and normally those who are uh, responsible for the door they will only close the close and open the door no okay. other cabin crew will open and close the door because oh, in oh, case a particular cabin crew will be trained for that yes because that is the uh, requirement uh, uh, you know worldwide in any case if the other cabin crew opens or closes the door then that cabin crew and you both will be terminated okay. from the airline so that is very very important okay and uh, then you have taken uh, then you took off and then the service has started so you've already served given food and all these things i have all the services done now it's time to approach so the you know aircraft is coming down approaching towards the landing area and after that approach what will happen mm, yes yeah. so during the approach uh, it's a it's kind of descent we can say when the aircraft is descending before this mm-hmm. when the seat belt sign is on you will again go and do the captain secure because and if the passengers are buying and wind off and they are sitting they are eating so they are at their uh, relaxed position so definitely you'll go and do the captain secure again the same thing you will have to do then aircraft lands the doors open and obviously cabin crew will open the door then the deep boarding starts deep boarding like passengers leaving the aircraft okay and then there's a security check you will again start the security security check is something which you are doing the check for the security of the aircraft in case if any passengers have forgotten uh, their valuables or anything they have left any unidentified items behind in the overhead bin or in the seat or under the seat anywhere so these are the things which cabin crew check okay. after the passengers are left and uh, uh, then we leave the aircraft then we reach the airport we sign out and then there is another briefing that's debriefing which is which happens at the end of the flight mm-hmm. and what do we discuss in the debriefing we discuss if there was anything uh, which uh, you know any uh, complaints or 
uh, how was the flight, um, any conflicts, all these things we discuss or any reports. So which is required that all the team get to know about it. Okay. okay. So any, um, you know, do you have anything to ask about it? Because uh, next what I'm asking, you know, I'll be asking you is a day in life of a cabin. Now this is, this is the thing which I will give you uh, as a task for tomorrow, as a homework, I would say. So you can just write it down. You can say, you can tell me, uh, you know, according to your uh, knowledge or you can Google whatever it is. But I just need to know that you've understood what a cabin crew is and what cabin crew undergoes in every day in the life of a you know, cabin crew. Mm -hmm. So that is very, very important. Okay. Is that okay? Okay, sure. Do you want to make a note of it? I, yeah, okay. Okay, so shall we proceed further? Hmm. Okay. Now we come to grooming. Can you see the screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. Is there any doubt in your mind? You can oh. share? Are you sure about that? Oh, no. Okay, so uh, before I start, uh, let me ask you some questions. Okay. Um, till now, whatever I have told you, um, what have you understood about a cabin crew? Like, what is a cabin crew in your perception, in your way of thinking right now, whatever I do, according to? Yeah, like uh, you said before, uh, like uh, cabin crews are the main part of the main part of the aircraft. Like uh, they will secure the cabin uh, before the aircraft uh, approaches or before the aircraft uh, take off. Uh, and like I can, uh, like I can understand. Little bit. So, so you know what, uh, your homework could be for tomorrow that uh, the one which I've already given you, the day in life of a cabin crew, which you're going to tell me. Okay. Also, you would tell me about what is cabin crew. If you want to write it down, you can write it down. Okay. What? Yes, what is cabin crew? That is also one question. The another question is, what are the duties and responsibilities of a cabin crew? Okay, uh, one second. Uh, hmm. I don't know the thing. A day in a life of a cabin crew. Yes. This is what we, I'll ask you tomorrow, a day in life of a cabin crew. It's just a, it's going to be a discussion. Okay. Okay. The questions which you have to prepare. Mm -hmm. uh, what is a cabin crew? Cabin crew. Okay. And the second question would be, um, what is the importance uh, of the cabin crew? What is important? Yeah. And third would be, what are the duties and responsibilities of the cabin crew? Okay. Okay. Okay, so now um, I'm going to start and talk about grooming. You must have heard of this word earlier. 
Yeah. So what do you understand by this word, grooming? Like uh, preparing ourselves. Getting preparing. Ourselves better. Uh, like getting ourselves better. Uh, our, our appearance. Well, making us making yourself like making our appearance better before. Okay. So yes, uh, grooming is all about that. Uh, but there is more to it, not just the outer appearance. It has to be uh, somewhat from the inner. So now I have uh, divided or separated or categorized grooming into two parts, mm. physical and metaphysical. <clears throat> Now, when we are talking about physical, obviously, the first thing which comes to the mind, I guess, it is the outer thing which we are talking about. It is, we are talking about the skin, hair, the attire, the clothes which we wear, uh, nails, teeth, and the BMI, body mass index. So, this is something which is the outer appearance, which comes in the outer appearance, which is very important. Now, when we talk about the metaphysical, Metaphysical is all about attitude, behavior, approach, and poise. These are the four things which is uh, utmost required into the metaphysical. Now, let me uh, put this, uh, uh, you know, put it in this way that your skin is very good. Your hair is, uh, you know, good. Nicely, you have put your hair. You have wore a good attire for the interview right uh, your nails are good teeth fine body mass index is completely fine but then if your attitude is wrong right if you're throwing attitude if your attitude is wrong your behavior is not good you're not approachable and uh, the way you sit you talk uh, you walk is not uh, good then there is no point then you're not groomed okay you're not groomed at all because just the outer appearance is not all about growth. Grooming is all about all these things as well. You know, the complete personality. And when we talk about this word personality, it just doesn't come, uh, just doesn't go with the clothes and skin and hair. It also goes with the attitude, approach and your calmness, how you deal the situation, how you speak to the people. So these are all the things which, you know, encompass the grooming. Right? Okay. Now, when we talk about skin, we have uh, to take care of our skin a lot. And uh, in that case, as I've already told you, that is the uh, priority when you're going for a cabin crew interview. Okay. So, what are we, how do we take care of the skin? If we have studied uh, many times, we have uh, the knowledge about it, yet we do not practice it. But then I would definitely, you know, impose on these things that it should be taken care of, uh, which starts with the diet. What kind of diet are you taking? This, there should be lots of water. We, how do we clean our skin? So cleaning is also necessary. Toning, then moisturizing. Then you exfoliate because either, uh, at least you exfoliate once a week. Because um, exfoliation is why necessary because it takes away your dead skin. Okay. And uh, yeah, it reveals your new soft skin. So that is very important. Then you can use many homemade natural products. Like exfoliate means uh, like what? what is okay. Uh, have you have you heard of this uh, scrub part that you scrub your face with the uh, walnut scrub? There are there are many uh, products available in the market. No, I haven't used it. Actually, you haven't used. See. Uh -huh. um, for uh, guy, when you are actually going for a see, guys are always, uh, you know, uh, you know, like given a um, image of rough and tough. So when they, oh. when it comes to the skin part, they okay. normally didn't they don't take that much. But yeah. The thing is, when you are going for the cabin position, then you have to take care of your skin because okay. one spot, one pimple, or something like that, you will not be able to go for the interview. I mean, you are not eligible for that. So okay. you'll get rejected of that. So it's better you take care of your skin. So exfoliate. There are many scrubs which are available in the market. Huh? Okay. And you can scrub your skin nicely. You, these, these are like small granules which comes. And you just put it on the skin. And they're very good for the skin. Like they will not do any harm. You just okay. have to uh, exfoliate like in a circular motion towards the outward. Okay. And this is the kind of... Uh, 
care which you will be giving. And you can also make homemade scrub. There are many kinds of homemade scrub which are available. Okay. Mm. So, anyways, don't uh, take so much uh, uh, pressure making homemade scrub and all that. It's better you go and buy walnut scrub or any scrub which is, uh, uh, you know, good and you can use it. You will see the difference in your skin. Okay. okay. Now, skin care. <laughs> skin care, we have two parts, internal and external. Why are we talking about what, what are we going to do with the internal part? Let's see. You are what you eat. So whatever you eat, it reflects, it shows on your skin. It is actually right like that. Yes. So you drink water every day around eight glasses. Yes. Um, avoid junk in fast food, whole fresh food you need to eat. Exercise, which is the stress buster. And then sleep for eight hours, six to eight hours a day. And then nature, sun, fresh air, and all these. These actually gets absorbed in your skin and you... Uh, you know, come out fresh, which is very, very good. Eat bad, look bad, or feel bad, or eat good, look good, or feel good. That is your choice. Oh. Right? Okay. Whatever you eat, you need to check, check and take care of your uh, daily routine on what mm. you are having. Uh, now, let me ask you. Do you drink uh, enough water every day? Mm, yeah. How many glasses of water or how many liters of water do you drink? Uh, like uh, after I get up early morning, like uh, I drink a, a, a bottle, a full of water. And uh, after that, uh, after that, I drink randomly every day. So around like, like uh, what? Like uh, it's not around, I, I won't keep any. Like, <laughs> like today, I drink three good glasses, four glasses like that. Uh, like I drank uh, randomly. So you drink only four glasses of water every day? No, no, no. Like uh, I'm not saying that I won't, uh, like uh, I will, uh, like I'm not keeping any, what do you say, like calculations about how am I drinking daily. <laughs> or Like uh, I'll take, whenever I want, I take water. Okay. So it's better you make a habit of at least uh, drinking like uh, uh, two liters two to three liters okay. so it's better maximum you can do that uh, even if you're drinking even if you start uh, drinking two liters per day that is also fine okay. it is actually you know water is very very essential and it uh, actually takes care of the entire body it uh, controls your uh, checks your metabolism checks your skin health checks your mental each and everything your body and so water is an excellent medicine i would say so it's better that you start drinking around like two liters of water every day, at least. Okay. At least you start. And then uh, junk food, fast food, obviously you need to avoid it. Don't eat that much, but obviously we have that uh, kind of palate every day. So we feel like eating, oh, chalo, we, we, can, we are going to have this chatpata thing sometimes and all that, okay. you know, but that's fine. Sometimes it's okay. But uh, don't make it a habit. It's better you uh, go for the fresh food, fresh, fresh, uh, you know, green vegetables because this is what's going to do wonder for your body as well as skin. So exercise, exercise. Yeah. I don't know whether do you do exercise. Yeah, no. I'm interested. Do exercise? Oh, very good, very good. And uh, better you take sleep, good sleep every day. Yeah, good. For how many days? Very good. Very good. More than eight days. <laughs> okay. So it's better. So this is this is all about the internal part, which is required. Now we come about the uh, we talk about the external part. The outer appearance is crucial. Yes, it is crucial. Whenever you're going for an interview, what you wear, how you you know uh, what uh, how you have uh, done your hair, your skin, each and everything, it is very very crucial. So let's not neglect the external part also. And uh, with the external part, the first thing which comes to my mind is the personal hygiene. So whenever you are, for example, you are talking to one of the passengers, or you're in the cabin crew, you're talking to one of the passengers. What if you're smelling bad? What if you're smelling bad? What if, what if the, obviously the passengers, they will, uh, they can smell you also. Like, like if, if you, even if you're not, uh, you haven't used your duo or you haven't took your bath or something like that, and you're just smelling bad. For example, how do you feel if you, if you, if you actually get uh, encountered with uh, someone who has uh, not taken shower and is smelling bad, 
obviously you will not uh, you you will step away a little right so mm-hmm. the personal hygiene is also very important why right? um when you're not taking shot or when you're not taking there is something coming in front of the camera oh oh sorry, sorry. yes so now uh, for example if you're not taking shower or something or you're not uh, cleaning yourself well that is also one of the you know invitation a kind of invitation towards to the germs so it's oh, not good for yeah, your yeah, body yeah. also right yeah, so it's better you take shower every day take care of your personal hygiene use deodorants uh do some face massages i've already given you the scrub yeah, part yeah. you can also go with the massage for that also you can apply anything you know any any cream which is uh, according to your skin type and then you can go ahead you can do the clean up uh normally girls do that but boys can also do that it's not i don't know facial nowadays even boys can go for facial but you can do at home uh, a normal clean up would also do. so that's fine uh homemade product or depending on what kind of homemade products uh, you use uh, uh, and uh, this makeup is for girls so that's not Of so all these uh, important things which is required is the personal hygiene, clean up, face massage, and all these things. Okay, for boys. Okay. Now, when we talk about the skin types, now let me ask you, what type of skin do you have? Oily skin. You have, uh, so you have pimples, acne. No, not pimples. Like uh, whenever, like. Uh, uh i step out from my home uh, like uh, i'll be getting uh, sweating mm. like, oh okay <laughs> yeah my okay. color will change when i will uh, when i uh, when i was in air conditioning room my color will be different it seems to be white when i step out from air conditioning room it will be brown and uh, i keep on sweating but you do not uh, you're not prone to acne or pimples like that No, 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 no. Like from my age, from my young age, I didn't uh, expose to any kind of pimples. I, I think then uh, it's good that you have that uh, uh, skin part. So when we when we talk about that oily skin, uh, well, if your pores are enlarged and your skin is shiny, this is the trademark of the oily skin. And if there is uh, blackheads or acne, but you do not have any acne, you do not have any blackheads also. Do you understand no. what is blackheads? Yeah, blackheads. like uh, mm. yeah, yeah, yes. So that it's cool. It's cool. Yeah. Yes. yes. So I it's can, yeah. yeah. So that means you are lucky with your skin, and it's better that you keep taking care of you know, care of your yeah. skin. Then there are different other types of skin also: normal mm. skin, dry skin, combination skin, sensitive skin. Mm. So according to the uh, the those type of skin, uh, people take care accordingly. Uh, but it's better that your skin type, according to what you said, is far 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 more better. So and keep taking care of it regularly. Okay. I would say. Now okay. makeup is this. This one is for girls, so no need. Okay. Now we come to the hair part. Okay. Hair uh, here, the care includes with the diet, wash, oil, and trim and natural products. So you have to keep clean. Uh, you know, take care of your diet, what you eat. Cabin crew uh, must not have to keep their moustache. They they must not. I have to keep the moustache. Oh, ah uh, yes like, yes yes. Okay, they have to trim. They have to shave off the beard. They have to shave off the moustache. Okay, clear clear shave. Clear. Clear. Because uh, that's how the professional uh, you know mm-hmm. work is there. Okay. So. For cabin crew, do you, do you, do you love a mustache or beard? No, like uh, sometimes I'll give something self trim. Okay, but for the interview, for example, if you are going for an interview uh, for cabin crew interview, then definitely okay. you have to shave off yeah, your mustache. Okay. Yeah. So and now the hair, obviously diet, and then you wash your hair regularly. Regularly in the sense not every single day, but at least uh, twice a week. But for guys it's fine because guys are rough and tough with it you wash their hair every day <laughs> so that depends on them and uh, then you need to oil your hair do you oil your your hair oh no like uh, i'll wash my hair with deep breath from like you know, one day after another like not regularly but uh, like one day after another so but, i won't uh, 
Okay. But do yeah. you oil your hair? No, no, no. no. So you, you never oil your hair? No, oh, sometimes. Uh, like, not mostly. Sometimes. Okay. According to your hair needs, it's fine. And uh, it's better that uh, you keep your hair moisturized and you keep your hair strengthened. And that's the reason why we oil the hair. Uh, what is your hair type? Is it uh, dry, oily or how is it for your scalp? Dry, oily or like yeah. it's not, uh, it's smooth. Okay. So you go for regular trim? Mm, okay. <laughs> And then uh, some kind of natural products which people use. So in case if you're interested, you can go ahead. However, how as long as your hair is in good condition, there's no nothing to bother about. Okay. Right? Now, okay. uh, there's some hair care. We, as I told you, take proper diet, drink enough water. As I told you, the water is the best medicine for the entire body. Be it anything, be it skin, be it hair, be it anything. So drink okay. enough water. You can take supplements on medical advice, which is just disregard this in case if uh, you have hair loss or something, then it is advised. Otherwise, it is not advised to anyone. Okay. And um, fresh fruits and veggies, very, very important. It will have a good effect on the hair. And then manage stress or workout because if there is a lot of stress, people uh, even, uh, you know, you tend to lose your hair as well. So it's better as you already exercise, so you need not to worry about that. Uh, let's talk about the external hair care. Uh, you need to wash around twice a week, which you normally wash. Travel dry, no rough. And uh, like roughly when people, you know, rough their hair after washing mm -hmm. their hair. So that is that also tends to, you know, break the hair, which is mm -hmm. not good. Then avoid hair styling products, curling iron, hair straightener, etc not much people use you can i mean if anybody wants to use they can use but not much oh. okay trim regularly to avoid spin do you have a question no no okay then avoid hot water avoid hot water instead uh, lukewarm if required so that means uh, uh, for example why i have written this because during winters um people normally uh, go for uh it's a uh, lot of uh, you know uh, it's very cold let's go and wash my hair with the hot water hot water is never good oh. for hair okay. it's never good for hair it's better in case if it is uh, winter you can go with the youth form or the normal tap water which means hot water will it will uh, the hair will fall if you take hot water Yes, it will take, it will actually, you know, extract all the oils from the scalp, you know, the natural oils and it will make mm -hmm. the hair rough, dry and all that thing. So hot okay. water is never suggested. <laughs> but anyways, in Chennai, it's not winter. It's never yeah. winter. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> even even during, uh, in the month of January, it's 30 degrees. I've been yeah. there, so I know. Always so, <laughs> so no need to worry of winter yeah. when you are in Chennai. <laughs> okay. And um, and when we uh, talk about the shampoo, yes, uh, shampoo you always have to use the mild one. Strong is only suggested if you have dandruff. And you know there's a lot of shampoos uh, out in the market. You know the medicated one or the normal uh, branded one, which is head and shoulders. In case if you have dandruff, you don't have dandruff, right? No. So it's better. I haven't tried ones. So what do you use to wash your hair? Uh, shampoo, really. shampoo. Yeah. Which shampoo? Normal, normal, mild shampoo. Uh, Tresem. Very good. So it's it's working. Uh, oh, in case if you okay. use, <laughs> in case if you use conditioner, uh, it's better to use in case. Okay. So in that case, you do not never use the conditioner on the scalp. You always use the conditioner on the length of the hair and the tips. Never use the conditioner on the scalp because okay. it is going to make the hair, uh, you know, scalp oily, and you might uh, it might lead to uh, loss or breakage of hair or something like that. Okay. So it's better do not use conditioner on the scalp. Then gently comb the hair. Use big teeth comb. Obviously, this is for the uh, for the girls. For boys, you have that small combs and all that. Avoid brushing wet hair and oil massage oil massage as you do oil massage so it's fine because it increases the blood circulation when you do the oil massage it increases the blood circulation so when it increases the blood circulation it actually you know spreads 
and then uh, oh. it yields in a better hair growth. The growth will be better. Yes, yes. So now I'm going to show you a hair care video, um, which uh, Dr. Geeta Patel, one of the dermatologists, have made the video. You just watch the video and uh, whatever I have explained to you, it's normally in the video and many other things. Okay. So please do let me know in case you are clothing which you are, the clothing which you are uh, actually using for the particular interview situation. Uh, like in we won't wear any coach boots. I, hello? No, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah, like mostly in uh, Chennai, uh, we won't wear any clothes, coat suits to wear, uh, to go to interview. So, if I have to attend interview here in Chennai for cabin crew, uh, what am I supposed to, what am I my appearance to be? Supposed? Oh, for in Chennai, if you are attending a cabin crew interview, then definitely you're going to wear this kind of attire, for sure. Okay? Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, See, he's wearing a white shirt and he's uh, wearing oh, a sky blue, around a sky blue shiny uh, tie. But you can go with the red tie or you can go with, uh, you know, pattern wise, a different black red mix, depending on the attire color. Okay. In case uh, whatever color shirt you're wearing, whatever color tie you're wearing depends, then it comes to the blazer part, blazer and the pant. So that is also very much required. The contradiction of the color has to be good. The contrast of the color has to be good with the pants as well as the blazer. Because you have to look smart. You have to look that you, uh, you know, the, the, the interviewer should also, you know, get that, uh, uh, you know, vibes or that impression that, yes, this person, he knows what to wear in what situation, in what time. So it is very much required. So this kind of attire is... Uh, good if you're wearing for a cabin crew interview there in general. okay any questions no okay so let's move ahead Okay, anyways, it's uh, anything do you want to ask till now? Whatever I have uh, uh, taught you. No, uh, like all two. Not it. Not it? Okay, so uh, see, I will be, uh, as I've already told you, that the three videos I'll be sharing with you. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, it's uh, 11 30. Yes. Okay. Okay. And just a second, just a second. Okay, so I'll be sharing you those these three videos, and okay. also one thing uh, I want to tell you that uh, tomorrow we will start with the safety and emergency procedures. Okay. okay. Tomorrow we'll start with the safety and emergency procedures, as there is there's a lot of things to uh, tell you about. Uh, however, whatever I have taught you today till now. It is. Uh, it was uh, just the starting part, which a cabin crew must require to have, and then we can go down to the technical knowledge. So from tomorrow, there will be technical knowledge starting. Okay. The technical knowledge, whatever the cabin crew requires to have, not that deep technical knowledge which is required. Okay. Just the uh, normal things. Okay. So any questions you have, you can uh, write it down, and you can make a note of it. And uh, please do let me know tomorrow. And uh, uh, the homework which I have given you. Yeah, um, I have taken a note. Yes. So I will ask the questions tomorrow. And, uh, and uh, that's fine. Okay. No. Any any questions? No. no right? No, no. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, Monday, over to you. All right. So that was all about the today's session. Oh, Mandi, so, uh, yeah. could I interrupt uh, because I have to share these three videos with him. How do I share? Do I, 